Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about Video Llama. So let's get started. What is the architecture of the Video Llama model? What is the Video Llama model? Right. So uh, of course, uh, needless to say that large language models have become so popular. You find large language models everywhere, right? In fact, there have also been uh, image based large language models like Flamingo, Blip2, ImageBind. Uh, more recently, instruction following image based large language models have been also proposed, like the Lava model, Mplug Owl model, and the Mini GPT 4. Uh, people have also proposed something called as Video Chat, which is a large language model uh, which can work on the visual content in the videos. Uh, now, the interesting part about Video Llama is that uh, it captures, temp uh, it has two interesting parts compared to uh, the three existing kind of pieces of work that I talked about. One, it captures temporal changes in the visual scenes. So it's not just about, uh, uh, you know, about images, but it actually captures temporal changes in the video scenes. And second, uh, uh, you know, it integrates audio visual signals as well. So video chat cannot really incorporate the audio information, but this one takes care of audio information as well. Okay, so this is how the architecture of the video llama model looks like. As you see, the input uh, basically is going in here, uh, both with the audio and the visual content. There are two pipelines, so to say, uh, as part of the model. So the left one, left branch is basically the vision branch. The right branch is the audio branch. And uh, well, the input is the video and the kind of task that you want to get done from Video Llama model is to come up with some sort of a text description about the video or do question answering about, uh, uh, you know, based based on the uh, content shown in the video and so on. Okay. So therefore, uh, the left branch tries to do vision language alignment, while the right branch tries to do audio language alignment. Now here, uh, in both of these branches, what you see uh, is that there is an encoder. So there's a visual encoder in the visual branch, a vision branch, and uh, audio encoder on the audio side, right? Uh, and uh, uh, so in in case of vision, well, this encoder is VIT along with a Qformer, while in case of audio, this encoder is basically just the image bind encoder. Okay. So they give you some sort of uh, tokens. So uh, when you take the video part, you essentially pass through the visual encoder, you get some tokens, video tokens, and then you could get some audio tokens. Uh, um, uh, so for, uh, you know, these visual encoder actually acts on each of those video frames specifically. So therefore you get, a to you get tokens per frame. Okay. Similarly, the audio encoder sort of uh, acts, uh, audio encoder essentially is an audio spectrogram transformer, uh, and it acts on small, small, little, let's say two millisecond uh, uh, audio files. And therefore, what you get is um, multiple tokens of output. Now, the video queue former and the audio queue former model, basically, they both try to aggregate the frame level, uh, frame level representations or the little uh, audio uh, part level information so as to essentially get uh, a combined representation for the entire long sequence. Okay, so uh, before that, in fact, there is also this position encoding uh, being added because uh, these frames don't have any position information. So you add the position information both on the video side and on the audio side, and then you essentially pass uh, the, you know the outputs through video queue former or the audio queue former. And then finally apply a linear uh, uh, transformation so as to get the output in the embedding space, uh, text embedding space as desired by the uh, by the decoder LLM in that sense. Okay. So that's that. Now, um, yeah, so if you think about it, there are three parts to this model. One is the vision language branch. The second is this audio language branch. And the third important part, of course, is the text based large language model right at the top. Now this could be Vikuna, this could be Lama. Um, and could also so so the way it works is that it takes uh, uh, various different parts of the prompt so it can take a human prompt so for example describe this video but along with that it also takes these uh, soft prompts in some ways which are encodings of the audio part and the video part yeah. and then it basically comes up with this nice output this video is an animation of a rocket launching from a launch pad at night okay so how is this video llama model trained? We saw the architecture. How is it trained? Well, it's trained uh, since there are two different branches. It's trained in a multi-branch cross-modal way. Okay, so that's what they call it, multi-branch cross-modal training. So there are two parts to the training, of course, vision language training and the audio language training, and it's done in two phases. Yeah. So the vision language is done in the first phase. You uh, so uh, so the way this is done is by essentially doing pre-training using two important kinds of data sets. 
So they pre-train on the web with uh, 2 million video caption data set. So where the uh, task is essentially the input is video clips and the output is the text description, the text description for uh, or the text caption for the video. Now they also wanted to retain static visual concepts. So videos are of course dynamic visual concepts, but just to retain static understanding as well, they also added to this pre-training task image caption data and the input is basically just a image frame and um, you know the output expected is the caption for the image now after this uh, dual pre-training is done they fine-tune on a video based conversation data set so as to execute visual instruction tuning so uh, uh, essentially uh, uh, this is a conversation based data set and it's actually a combination of three different data sets it contains uh, image detail description data set which was used in G mini gpt4 image instruction data set used in lava and video instruction data set used in video chat so they sort of combined the best of all of those and uh, fine tuned um, this this pre-trained model pre-trained uh, vision language uh, uh, branch of the model um, uh, for for visual instruction tuning now for the audio language branch, uh, the problem is that uh, there is a lack of audio text aligned data. You don't have audio text aligned data. Uh, so therefore they also train the audio language branch using the visual text data itself. Now, how does this make sense? Well, this makes sense because their audio encoder is an image bind audio encoder. And uh, as you might remember from the image bind thing, image bind is essentially a multimodal model uh, serving six different modalities. Um, so therefore, uh, they essentially, uh, you know, uh, train the audio language part pipeline as well uh, using visual text data. And uh, thanks to the image binds multimodality, it basically learns to process audio as well. So they further pre-train this audio related components of the entire pipeline on an audio caption data set uh, with the audio text audio to text generation task. So a small data set that they use audio text uh, data set. However, the majority of the pre-training is actually done using the just the, the, the same visual text data. Here are some examples of the abilities of video llama model. So uh, it, it basically has this audio visual integration perception ability. So for example, you look at this video, uh, the guy is sort of uh, opening the door and uh, you know that's making some sounds and so on. So um, you can actually take this video and ask the model describe what you hear. It can actually say I hear sounds of footsteps on the floor in the background. There's a dog barking in the house. Does the man wear glasses? Well, yes, he wears glasses is, is what the model is able to uh, correctly predict. Right. So basically this is a case of uh, video llama answering the question based on the background sound as well as the visual content uh, of the video. Right. Now look at this another video and you know, the guy on the stage basically um, uh, you know uh, gets a loud applause in the video. So how was the audience response? Well enthusiastic clap loudly. What is the man doing? He's playing a saxophone. Okay, so that's that. So um, so it can basically incorporate both the audio as well as visual aspects uh, into the output into the conversation. The model is also able to perceive and understand static images. So for example, you can give an image of this kind and ask the model to describe the image in details and look at the awesome details, uh, specifically highlighted ones, golden retrievers, so a particular breed of the dog and you know is basically running with the tennis ball and there is a green grass and there is a whole bunch of other details which are sort of also described um, as part of the output. This is an image from the GPT-4 paper. Well, and uh, you can also ask still the same kinds of questions. What is unusual about this image? And it nicely says that, uh, well, a man in yellow shirt is standing on top of a parked car while holding an iron iron board and pressing clips. Okay. Um, it also has the ability of common knowledge concept recognition. So given this building, do you know the building in this picture? It's nicely able to say it's US capital, capital building, right? Or uh, given this particular uh, image, do you know who is the man on the right? Well, it nicely basically predicts uh, both the uh, you know the real name as well as the name in the in the movie uh, or in the in the television series, right? So also able to predict the name of the television series. Who is the lady on the left? It's able to again do the same job correctly. What is the relationship? It sort of explains it pretty nicely. Okay. Lastly, you know, it also has the ability to capture temporal dynamics in videos. So, so look at uh, this video and uh, you can ask it to describe this video. Uh, now look at the detail at which it describes the video, not just the static aspects, but also the dynamic aspects. Static aspects like young red, red haired woman, striped shirt, gray background, but then holding her fingers, uh, you know, uh, as if trying to be quiet and so on. So that's the action part as well, which is captured nicely. 
trying to signal something and so on. Yeah. Look at the video on the right side. Well, there's a, a you know um, um, sort of a boat sort of flowing in, uh, uh, like, you know, going into on the water in the water, right? And it can nicely uh, describe uh, that it is a cherry blossom lined river uh, flowing by a boat on the water. And what direction is the ship going? Well, it's going on the right side of the video. So it's nicely able to capture all of these nice temporal dynamics in short videos at least. OK, so in summary, in this video, I talked about the video lama model. It's a multimodal large language model that achieves video grounded conversations. We saw uh, how it can achieve those conversations between humans and computer by connecting language decoder with off the shelf unimodal pre-trained uh, video and audio models. Right. So uh, the multi branch uh, cross model pre training is involved to achieve both visual language alignment and audio language alignment. And third, it can actually perceive and comprehend video content, uh, um, both static video content and dynamic video content, uh, generating meaningful responses, uh, which are sort of very much grounded in the visual and auditory information present in the video. OK, so I hope you liked uh, this video. Thank you for watching. Connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my research on my homepage.